GM, GM, just a quick one before we get going. So, as you know, the Blockmates podcast is for informational and entertainment purposes only. Certainly shouldn't be considered as financial advice. We have absolutely no idea what we're talking about half the time. So, any investment decision you do make should be based on your own research and your understanding of the risks involved. One more thing as well, there's around 50% of people who listen regularly who aren't subscribed yet. So, if you please could just do us a favor and hit the subscribe or the follow button or the like button. Helps content grow, helps us grow, helps it reach more people like yourselves um, and it means the world to us as well. So, that's the last I'll uh, ask of you. So yeah, let's get to the episode. All right, welcome back. Happy New Year. Episode of DYOR. I know it's been a while, but uh, we've been doing a lot of personal stuff recently. Five, six, we've been moving all over the world and all this kind of shenanigans. But um, we wanted to really tackle a, an extremely deep topic. And I think five, six, three knows this better than everyone after churning out an extensive Bible on deep in. And it's, um, I read it earlier and as I said to you off air, it's a, it is a masterpiece. <laughs> it's a really, really, really good kind of, not even, not a primer. It's, it's as deep as you're going to get on, on this aspect of the industry. And, uh, we wanted to kind of talk through a lot of the points and hopefully everyone can take, um, this and the article away as a, as a really strong base for their understanding of what's actually going on and some of the opportunities. But, uh, yeah, first of all, happy new year, five, six, three, how are you doing? doing good man yeah happy new year um yeah this one was fun to get into there's just so many different projects that are building right now and a lot of different rabbit holes you can get into so i was glad to put this thing together yeah i can imagine uh mainly me because i I have a terrible habit of doing this but there'll be a lot of side tangents and (laughs) connecting dots that don't need to be aligned here so (laughs) but um yeah there's a lot to filter through for sure so it was good to put all my thoughts down on paper and to talk through this with you, obviously. Yeah, we'll um we'll make sure the timestamps are as on point as possible for this, just because it could be quite a long one. But again, there's there's an awful lot to be took from this. So um if you need to like come back and revisit certain sections of it, we'll make sure that's all sorted. And please, uh a couple of disclaimers, not financial advice. I don't know what, how many more times to say that, but we're, we're not financial experts. We're both idiots. <laughs> <laughs> me, me, me more so. But, yeah, we're just um, stumbling through this, trying to figure it all out. But some cool yeah. stuff in here, for sure. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, we've just recently hit 6,000 subs as well. So thanks for all the support. We're still drastically undervalued on the subscriber account. So if you could just hit the subscribe button and maybe even a like as well, if you're feeling generous after the whole biz. But yeah, first of all, what the hell is deep in? it's a good place to start yeah it just sounds so funny but it's decentralized physical infrastructure networks so basically it's trying to connect real world networks to consumers through a thin layer of infrastructure on the blockchain and that's basically all it is so if you think of all these like different platforms out there i mean um there, there have been just so many different web to um vc backed companies that market themselves as platforms and then get crazy valuations because of that. What they're basically saying is on this platform, people can come from either side of the buyer or seller and they as middlemen can extract some value from that. And that works really well until the middlemen start being rent seeking and they extract way too much value that they're, than they're worth. So the idea behind Deepin is you can put that on the blockchain and decentralize it and get incentives aligned on both sides and have this really thin infrastructure layer that connects the two. So you have this scattered group of providers and the scattered group of customers. So you can think of like Uber for that. So you have drivers and you have riders and without Uber as being the middleman, they wouldn't be able to find one another. But um, as we'll get into later, they take as much as they can get, right? Because they're incentivized to take as many fees as possible where at, at, while still maintaining the driver pool that they have. Um, so that's where we're gonna get into. There's 11 different projects here, so there's a lot to get to. So let's, uh, yeah, let's start getting into it. Um, I guess we covered Solana in this report specifically because they've been really the leader in Deepin. So we wanted to dig into why and some of the projects we're most excited about on Solana. Um, I, they all started really with the Solana phone. It's kind of like the first time they ventured into the physical land for the 
the most part. Did you, uh, I faded this pretty hard when it first came out and I know a lot of people were making fun of this. Did you, uh, did you ever get the Solana phone? I, I never got it. I should have got it. Um, <laughs> and it was quite funny to see the secondary for these on like eBay's and whatever secondary oh, market crazy. You Thousands of dollars. I mean, this, this was kind of like one of those things that you see, particularly at the bonk top. Like, as, <laughs> of soon as, it, as, soon, as soon as it came out that there was like, I think at the time, the particularly at the time when everyone was going crazy for it, the, the bonk amount covered the actual cost of the phone, which is yeah. quite hilarious. But like, I, I, I don't, I wouldn't bet against Anatoly and Raj when it comes to strategy around this kind of thing. And incentives and like really playing the game and i know it's like again i'm going off topic immediately but they've played that like masterfully i think yeah for sure i mean it's kind of this similar thing to these nft communities and rewarding those and calling that those out those out with um different airdrops and whatnot like you saw with i think it was dim that just announced that they're airdropping to pudgy penguins holders and a bunch of others mm-hmm. so if you can hike, hype up a community it definitely helps so uh, I think that's what they're trying to do with the Solana phone anyway. It's like this personal NFT that you can physically hold. Yeah, the um what what was interesting, like this this seems to have been and there's still a few to kind of come over whether they will or whether they won't. I think with your latency and your high performance, Solana seems like a good environment for this kind of landscape to flourish. Um and with like one of the main contenders in the space, Helium, they actually had their own blockchain. Like I remember back to first cycle, everyone was kind of speaking about Helium. It never really had its day in the sun, particularly on on the token side from the speculative side. But they just said like, "Screw this, we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna just migrate everything over over to Solana." And um, the day they actually did that um, was the day that the Mad Lads mint was happening, and and oh, no all fee markets and stuff like that as well. But um, when we had Dan, the head of the Solana Foundation, on the on the podcast a couple of about four or five months ago, and now he was saying that was like a beautiful test of all the network infrastructure that Solana had built in the prior months, like after the backlash of like downtime and stuff like that, because you had over like a billion um, requests to the account or the contract. Of, the, the contract or the account as it's called on Solana for, for the mint and obviously super low fees, super high throughput, you can spam to the yeah. heart content um, but all the while they were really panicking because the Helium migration was actually going on at the same time <laughs> and a few RPCs went down but network didn't really skip a beat which is quite well, quite outstanding really Yeah, I mean it just goes to show why so many of these projects go to Solana, it's just because that low barrier to entry for most people, really low fees and the focus on u- user interface and whatnot. So yeah, no, I think a lot of the consumer apps coming out are looking towards Solana as maybe this is where we want to be. So I think before we get into project specific, what, why is now the time for this? Like in your opinion, I've got my own thoughts and there's a couple of upstream effects that have led to this huge boom and flourish and you know this focus on it but i'd love to kind of pick your brain on that yeah i think ah, it's just so easy to assign um value to this type of thing because if you think about it when we look at a lot of these DeFi protocols it's hard to uh, like map those to real life issues when you get so into the weeds but it's pretty easy to show someone like yeah, like Helium, for example, you can have this Wi-Fi hotspot and then if people use it, then you get paid for it. It's just a direct one-to-one to what they might expect, um, like supply and demand networks to work. So I think people are really trying to wake up to what real use cases exist, exist in crypto. And um, these consumer-facing products are just perfect for that. Yeah, I mean... I think this and AI and there's a hell of a crossover. That too. But there's um it's such an easy you know, like one liner to explain to someone who's coming in cold. 
it's like, oh, you've kind of democratized like five five G access, or you you're providing like a decentralized um, ride share and Uber competitor. Like, what's what's funny about this is like we've came kind of like full circle from similar sort of projects that pitch and raise a shit ton of money in the ICO boom. Um, but we obviously didn't have anything on the line that could enable that to happen. So it's just like, what have we did Uber on the blockchain? What have we did like just eat or <laughs> deliver it on the blockchain? Some shit like that. Yeah. Um, and then it started to get like stupid crazy, you know, and like a lot of people raised a lot of money and obviously they never came to fruition. But now it feels like with the likes of Solana and I don't know, whatever network and like all these kind of roll-ups as a service that are coming and like there's there's infinite possibilities to actually spin up your own train or plug into high-performing infrastructure. It's like there was probably something to that. I don't know if the people who were doing that at the initial at the initial time of raising were probably just jumping on the bit of a bandwagon, but I think we've kind of hit this time as a flat circle moment <laughs> where yeah, this it's actually feasible now. Um, and yeah. It's quite interesting to see some of these products come to market. Yeah, the infrastructure is actually there now. So mm. what was once like a meme, it's like, yeah, put this, but on the blockchain. But now you can actually do that. <laughs> Viva la denta coin, bring it back. Bring it back to their book. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> right, who are we starting with then? Yeah, we can jump into it. So these first sets are mostly about GPU networks and connecting a bunch of different um, hardware owners. So uh, whether that's consumer owners of GPUs, like you just have like an NVIDIA in your machine, you maybe you have like a small mining rig, or you have like full-scale operations and data centers that just have a bunch of leftover processors. That's on one side, the, the supply side. And then on demand side, I mean, obviously right now there's a huge chip shortage and there's a huge demand for these processors because they're required to build AI models, machine, learn mod machine learning models. And, and there's a bunch of different other applications too, but obviously that's what's the most interesting to people right now because everyone, everyone's thinking about where AI fits into this. Um, but yeah, the first one we had here was Nosana. They're building up their GPU grid right now. And they're mostly focused on plugging consumer hardware into this network. So you have a spare uh, 3090 or um, 4090 you can plug into the network, start earning in their test grid right now. And they're pretty much focused on some built-in integrations with some AI tools. So they have like Stable Diffusion, they have Llama, and uh, builders can start playing around in there. And yeah, the testnet's live right now and it's incentivized. So um they're just starting up though they're they're not going to be fully spun up until a little while from now i think yeah and um so the the point on basically semi semiconductor chips i think this is probably going to get quite 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 edgy across the globe as as the race for this kind of continues and you've seen kind of tensions even geopolitically about this kind of thing they just physically can't create them fast enough, can they? Right. It's like they because there's such fine precision that goes into generating these chips for the actual GPUs. It's like you can't exactly just chuck them on a 3D printer and and, and away you go. There's like there is really just a, a shortage purely down to production bottleneck, which is then instigating. Well, everyone can't be using 100 percent of capacity. Right. So how else can we tap into that? And I think this is why this aspect of the industry is, is really catching on, particularly with the, the rise of AI, you know? Yeah, I, I heard this crazy stat that China spent more importing uh, chips than oil in 2022. <laughs> so, yeah, it, it's crazy, man. It's um, People can't get enough. So if it takes, I don't know, a year or two to actually like order these machines these processors then um there's definitely a demand for a, a network of these on the cloud and having a thin infrastructure layer to support that is definitely makes a whole lot of sense especially when i mean centralized players exist like you have amazon web services you have azure mm -hmm. but those are very expensive compared to these other ones yeah and um so there's a few points in this um section on nosana so 
it's in the main grid scheduled April May. Um, yeah. If all things being green, you could potentially see from a speculative perspective if people are cottoned on to this that there could be uh, a lot of speculation going into such an upgrade, maybe by the rumor seller news kind of thing. But um, what's your overall thoughts on the token from a purely <laughs> yeah, investment we're getting to those. speculative vehicle? <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the token itself is used for staking. So the node operators put up their NOS tokens, and if they're caught misbehaving, they get slashed. Um, and then you can use it as like a medium of exchange within the system. So you can pay for services with an OS token. Uh, but yeah, I mean, they're really catching on to the the narrative, right? You got the AI narrative, uh, especially with Solana. So it could definitely do well. Um, the only issues I have with it is it's kind of a lot of for, uh, the token is earmarked for insiders. So like 62% ish. So you got like the team, the company and the investors all get a big chunk. Um, there's some liquidity mining. Um, so that's help happening. And then there's airdrop for a lot of these early network participants. Um, and you don't necessarily hit any governance claims with this token because they have a company that all that flows back to and you don't get any revenue claims. So, I mean, <laughs> not a lot in crypto is based on fundamentals to be fair, but there aren't a lot Fundament of fundamentals. Fundamentals are bearish. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly. So, I mean, you buy in speculation, but you kind of always are with crypto. So um, the fundamental investor in me is doesn't like a lot of what I'm seeing with the token, but it doesn't necessarily mean it can't do well. Um, just like basically everything in this report could do well because it's caught on to all these narratives. But yeah, that's that's where I stand on it. Yeah, um, I, I always find it amazing how many different ways or how many different synonyms a, a team can rephrase the word team or um, <laughs> like investors tokens. and Yeah, like, that's why I try to call it out specifically in these reports, like <laughs> insiders. That big old green chunk is insiders. <laughs> um, yeah, um, but you're going to get that. It's There's going to be a portion of that anyway in, in most projects, but 62% seemed like a lot to me. Mm. Did it, did it, was there anything on the vesting? Oh, I'd probably have to check through the docs again. Yeah, it's all, it's all we have the docs listed in there. Um, I don't think vesting starts anytime soon. Um, but yeah, it, just something to keep in mind. You're not getting any rev share. You're not getting any governance. Um, I guess there's a medium of exchange, but that's probably that's mostly what these um, DPIN tokens are yeah. used for is medium of, of exchange. So um, that's something, I guess. <laughs> it's not a lot, but it's something. Yeah, and if we do keep referring to the article as well, I think by the time this is out, we'll probably do a double whammy and post the, the, them very close together, put it that way. So by the time this is out, the article should be out. And this is a taster of the meal deal section of what you're going to come to see from more premium research, what we're looking at, where we're kind of thinking the industry's heading, and hopefully that can kind of indicate where some value might be in the market. So this is, this is a bit of a taster. This is free. So a 50 odd page report. Um, yeah. Enjoy it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, and give us some feedback on it too, because exactly. Yeah. If you're going to be paying for it, we're going to try to deliver as much value as possible. Um, hopefully that's obvious from what we're delivering here. <laughs> uh, anyway, took number go up, <laughs> number go down. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, but yeah, that's Nosana. It's a cool project and uh, they're just starting up now. It's a pretty small grid to be fair, but uh, they're trying to make the onboarding process for, um, for hardware owners to be as easy as possible. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, we can so hop into the next one if you want, unless you had some more ideas on Nosana. No, no, all good. It'll probably get the Ansem shill powers as well, so I'll take that for what it's worth. Yeah, no, uh, is he big on that one specifically? Yeah, he's big on that one specifically. Uh, so that might uh, that might that might nullify the sixty two percent. Oh yeah, for sure. No, it, that all goes out the window once you get the Ansem retweet. So I remember, I grabbed one of the tokens right before, like yeah, whatever. It's it, it's wild the amount of sway he has in this industry. Um, for better or for worse. <laughs> yeah. So the next one, everyone, if you've stuck around through the bear market, you'll have 
definitely heard of this and it's render so i didn't actually realize that they'd migrated the ticker um i don't know if there's been any yeah economic tweaks to this a little bit um that was mostly when they swapped over from an erc20 on ethereum to uh, what they call spls on um solana they just changed the ticker um, i guess to, just to make it obvious that you have to migrate perhaps yeah because they've been around for a while it was like 2017 ish when they started yeah. spinning up their uh, their network uh but hopefully a lot of people know about these guys they're uh really it's one of the first projects you probably think about when you hear uh mm-hmm. deep in um they yeah so you can basically use their grid of gpus to render scenes for 3d artists so that can be for movies or for games uh, there's a lot of services out there both centralized and decentralized that allow you to render scenes um, render spun off from a company called Otoy, which had their pretty known um, rendering product called Octane. So with Render, you can use Octane to, to render some scenes. So it's kind of like a, a feather, feather in the cap of a lot of crypto people because um, we've actually seen a lot of adoption. So it's been used in movies and TV shows. Um, so it's pretty cool that you're seeing this like get into the, the outside world and pierce that veil. Um, but yeah, they've seen some uh, pretty good growth. I mean, steady growth over the past few years. Uh, we we put some some data in the report, so you can see some frames renders rendered and jobs created year over year. Some steady growth, and they recently voted to adopt Helium's burn and mint equilibrium model. So we could talk a little bit about how that model works because a lot of these um, projects use that model. Um, so basically. Uh, Consumers want to pay in dollars. They don't want to go out and buy these weird tokens to transact on your network. So um, they want to pay in dollars, but the protocol itself wants to distribute tokens. So how do you um, how do you fix that? So from the front end, the consumer pays in dollars, which behind the scenes, those are converted to a proportional amount of these render tokens in, in, uh, in this case. So um, once those tokens are burned on the front end, um, these node operators in the back end earn points over the per- course of an epic or an epoch, however you say it. And then um, proportional to how many points you earn during that period of time, you get that proportional amount of the emissions for that period of time. Um, and the the money that people put in uh, that burnt those original render tokens, those are also distributed to, the, uh, to all the, the node operators. So it's an easy way for a project to have a predictable emission rate while also accepting dollars in the front end. Yeah, I think, I think that's so important. As as I say, you can kind of see, and we've did a couple of podcasts on this now as well, but that whole idea of expecting people like any, any ounce of friction, just, just not going to cut it anymore. I think, um, Gaiman's leading the charge and showing the rest of the industry what's actually possible from like account abstraction and stuff like that but like it needs to be product first and crypto rails in the back end and not the other way around and i think even just recognizing like small little ux improvements like this i think um yeah it, it's just a power law right they're gonna they're gonna look at the top like every kind of asset that falls into this category is gonna look at the likes of helium and render doing this and i think they'll probably steer towards actually doing that so it's it's net net positive for the full industry because it's just going to become a commonplace for if there is tokenization happening on the back end that's actually um part of the system that's going on on, on the rails in the back end it's it needs it needs to be um implemented across the board i think so quite refreshing to see that actually yeah i mean the, the technology of crypto should not get in the way of the user experience it should bolster the uh, user experience and uh yeah i think the BME model is pretty good, um, especially if you're trying to distribute tokens and incentivize that early growth. It's kind of like a bootstrapping method. So a lot of these platforms, um, the traditional sense, like the Web2 sense, they have all that VC money that they can kind of spray into the people's hands to subsidize costs early on and get the network going and kick started. And that's kind of what these token models are meant to do. They're trying to get initial growth and build out that initial web, especially with the deep end projects. You're trying to build out that provider network and also you have a cold start problem, right? You're trying to get the supply and the demand side spun up at the same time. And without the supply, you don't get the demand. Without the demand, you don't get the supply. So that's what these models are supposed to be doing. I'm just looking on 
um, trading view at the minute to, tr and it is, it's the volatility across render, uh, render against Nvidia. So I'm just trying to see oh, if nice. render acts as like a higher beta to Nvidia, and because when Nvidia went on that tear, render did particularly well. I think there's probably like a since like beginning of 2023 there's like a probably 100 percent range so it's not it's not exactly tightly correlated but um, no but that's what people think of though so you have to understand market psychology in that if nvidia is ripping then people like that have most of their assets on chain it's like okay what can i bid <laughs> and render is usually the one because it's just so tied to this uh uh, grid of GPUs and that whole narrative behind it too. So, yeah, it catches a lot of hype for sure. Um, it's so no, it's, it, yeah, it's it's at one point five billion, fully yep. dilute two billion, um, up six percent on the day as we're talking about it. But yeah, it hit new highs not too long ago, around Christmas for market cap anyway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's an interesting one, as I say. It's um, it literally is the like, in in my mind anyway. I I could be completely wrong, and people, um, obviously have their own takes and stuff. But this is like the first thing I think of. This and helium, uh, as yeah. my kind of first kind of. It, but the, the thing is with um, render as well. It's it falls into the deep end basket, which I still think's relatively early. I think I think there'll be a lot of people that are seeing like. Deep in, come across the feed and be like, "What the hell's that?" They've seen it, but they don't necessarily know what it is. But so it ties very well into that basket. But if AI starts running, you best believe that's going to be one of the market leaders as well. Oh, for sure. Yeah, it checks a lot of boxes for people. Um, so it doesn't. There's a couple different ways it can catch a bid, which is why people like it so much. Um, yeah, yeah, and it's already well established. So anyone that comes into the this arena has to do better right or why wouldn't someone just use render what we've included this section on that though as well as a bit of the you know you've said all coin bad new coin <laughs> good and that that is so like at this point in the cycle where the likes of celestia comes out and does what's it then like 9x at the minute oh yeah yeah total different total, di total different asset asset you know but like <laughs> But yeah, there was like legacy charts and a lot of overhang, and when you do get into two, like years two, three, four, those are where your large portion of your emissions from from your early stage investors are continuing to to kind of vest and divest. So there is that, um, and as you say, it might have hit. Where was it? I was just looking. So market cap, all time high, but not price, but not price exactly. <laughs> Yeah, it's still down, what, almost hey, eight bucks back in peak bowl. So, yeah, it's you're getting diluted if you're you're holding this through the bear market for sure. Um, so a lot of the, yeah, the market just goes after the next shiny thing for sure. So you have to keep that in mind. So there's new money is going to usually go to the new things. Um, but if any of these AI projects or deep end projects that are old, quote unquote, 2017, um, are going to catch a bid, then I, I would put some money on render for doing that because it's just so well known and it, mm -hmm. it checks a lot of the boxes for people. But yeah, there's going to be a lot of bag holders for some a project like this that suffered so many so much drawdowns. Um, but yeah, people are getting bailed out now, so happy for them. So next one is not live yet. Well, the token's yes. not live yet, but Ionet. What's yeah. the deal? No, I'm I'm excited for this one, man. So um, the whole idea behind training AI and machine learning models is that you you kind of need, you can't just use it one machine and uh, spin up a model. You have to use a cluster of machines. So what IONET does, it allows you to customize different clusters of machines within their network and spin them up really quick. Like they had this demo at Breakpoint and I linked it in the in the article here. Um, they spin it up within like a minute of uh, on stage and it's pretty cool. You can just, all right, you want 
this many or these specific GPUs are at. We want them to be close by to us. So we want them in the States, we want them in Canada or UK, wherever. Um, we want them to have these specifications uh, with these integrations specifically, and you're up and running and using the network. Um, they already have 23,000 GPUs in their network, which is three times yeah. more than Akash. Um, they're partnered with Render and Filecoin. So a lot, a good chunk come from Render and Filecoin, but most are from native from their network. Um, but they're trying to use data centers, um, GPU like crypto miners from Ethereum, and then just anybody that has consumer hardware can plug into the network and start earning. So they're trying to lower the friction on the both ends. And it's, it's pretty what, impressive. What, what does this become? Because obviously this kind of idea, I suppose like what they're actually getting used for on, on the consumer end could be completely different, but I suppose this becomes a, like a really commoditized area. But what do you think? Is this like a huge BD game? Is this a connections game? Like, is this a onboarding low friction game? Like what, what are these, what will these competitors be kind of duking it out over here? And like, how, 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 do, how does the likes of IONet yeah. get well, to such a large, large amount of kind of GPUs in the network, you know? Yeah. I think it mostly is BD in the early stages for sure. You have to convince all of these providers to plug into your network. Um, so I do wonder how that works. Like, are they incentivizing that somehow? I'm not sure. Sixty-two um, percent of team tokens might do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah the, the, to be fair, the token info isn't out yet, so it's really possible. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's it's pretty cool. I mean, you have to imagine from like a startup that's trying to build an AI doesn't have a year and a half to source these um, these high end chips and build out a data center. They just want to plug into a network, and if the only options that exist are AWS or something that's decentralized that offers like 80% savings, they're going to go with this something that's decentralized. Um, especially when like an AWS instance takes like a couple of days to a couple of weeks to, to spin up and this only takes a couple of minutes, you can see where it starts tipping in the favor of a company like this or like a project like this, I should say. Um, and like there's no KYC, you can just plug in, plug out, however you want to do it. That helps too. Um, they're working on a bunch of integrations with um, like AI and ML apps. So like uh, Kubernetes, PyTorch, Hugging Face, you got um, a lot of the um, the gaming ones too, like Unity and Unreal Engine are on there, just um, plug and play. So they're trying to make it easier or what is it like better, faster, cheaper. They're trying to do all of them. So I'm pretty excited about this one. Yeah, that was a, that was a perfect, this is kind of like from the, I think Peter Thiel, school of thinking like <laughs> you know, if, you, if you're not hitting all three like what, what are we doing here and i think it's, it's really interesting because even without tokenization and incentives and like token alignment and stuff like that they can still pull off the infrastructure like obviously you're going to probably need tokens to, to to validate the network and stuff like that but it's really cool to see that companies coming out of the industry that we spend way too much time in are actually going to be in that basket of better faster cheaper which is really like really impressive uh, no talking yet for anyone who's listening and getting overly bullish um we'll try and send that out across all our channels if, as soon as we soon, know it's supposed to be i heard like end of q1 this is when the token is supposed to be live but yeah what we do know is they're going to try to use that same bme architecture so try yeah. to also help incentivize early use with this um, token emissions, which makes a whole lot of sense. Um, just like Render and Helium and all those guys. So, um, yeah, I'm excited. I think it's about probably going to be a. It's probably going to be a similar sort of playbook across the board. I think. Um, yeah, you're going to see some patterns the, here. Yeah, you, like similar to how you've seen kind of again totally different, but similar to how you see kind of L1s get off the ground and show me the incentive, I'll show you the outcome, who can actually make it as sustainable as possible. And it's probably going to be a lot of these games that get played. And that's the beauty of such an emerging aspect of the industry and being so young. It's great for me and you. <laughs> and stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, you, like I said before, like you're kind of replacing the early VC dollars with these early token incentives. And um, yeah, 
it's kind of a way to bet on the future success of the project too, in a way. Um, you can see as these as like farm and dump tokens if you want, but people still speculate on them. Mm -hmm. What we will do as well is uh, there should be a link to the Blockmates buffet in the description. That's a daily Telegram bulletin. If you if you've ever read the Daily Air back in the day when that was actually working, we're <laughs> trying out trying our best to rip that off. So if uh, <laughs> what we'll do is if you see it come out or if I see it come out, we'll pass it through to Hickson and it'll be included. In that, oh, on the day on his own, he has, has his yeah, finger on the pulse, and I'm pretty sure he's cloned himself six times. <laughs> <laughs> he's everywhere at once, man. I don't know how he gets all of this info packed into the buffet. It's but it's I read it every day. It's awesome. <laughs> so yeah, it'll be in there. If we find out about it, that's that's your place to look. It's completely free, so just jump in. Um, all right, what's next? What have we got? Yeah, man. So we we have a couple navigation esque kind of apps. So. These are like big, big areas. So it's kind of impressive that we're even talking about these because uh, when you're going up against people like Uber or Google Maps or something like that, it's it's very impressive to see even like mm -hmm. being in the conversation, you know. Um, but yeah, the first one up is Hive Mapper. They've been around for a little while, um, not like a super long, but they're one of the bigger players in the space. Um, you've probably seen. Um, their their dash cams are out there, so people can install their dash cams, plug it into a wallet, and just start driving around. And based on the data you send up to their network, you get paid in their Honey token. And yeah, it's just an interesting way to incentivize this decentralized uh, Google Maps or Google Street View. I guess you could look look at it. And um, yeah, I mean, you can think. Well, Google itself it takes all the data that you're using Google Maps it's with a ton of data. When you're driving around, you plugs that into its API data sets, and then other companies access those API, APIs and um, pay a lot for it. So HiveMapper is trying to decentralize that process. And like we said before, try to provide this really thin infrastructure layer. So it's not this rent-seeking middleman. It's it's somewhat of a, like, you can push the balance towards uh, incentives in either way you want. And uh, yeah, their goal is to start mapping the world they just they passed over a hundred million kilometers already. It's really That's impressive. Crazy. Yeah, it's it's crazy how quickly they've done this. It's it's impressive to see, even through relatively light token incentivization, how coordinated you can get a collective of people across the globe. And that's I think that's absolutely fascinating. It's super cool. Yeah, and you can think of it like people that already drive for a living. So maybe you're an Uber driver, delivery driver, truck driver, bus driver, whatever. Mm -hmm. I mean, you're going to drive anyway, and <laughs> you probably want a dash cam anyway, so might as well get paid for it, you know? Um, they, they should they should team up with Teleport and... Oh, I'm, I'm sure have, there's talks. Dual, dual incentives. <laughs> Every, yeah, well, everyone will be quitting their job to be a um, <laughs> Teleport driver. <laughs> no, it's funny, man, because I'm sure a lot of people are doing... Well, not, not that extreme, but they're probably trying to use a lot of these deep in just to supplement in income uh, income I and mean, we're going to talk about some more that um might make sense for people to look into even just from a like earning extra side side money so it's pretty cool especially because like google maps specifically they they're incentivized to map these uh high traffic areas right because that's where people need the traffic updates and whatnot but they really just skip over huge swaths of locations where they don't think it's too important and that's kind of where hive mapper comes in where they can um, i mean they're, they're incentivizing people to drive everywhere right um we're, we'll talk about yeah we can go into how they're using the bme model um so like render they have a set emission schedule to um like over time so like this epoch you have this amount of render tokens going out um, over a specific time but honey is a little different with hive mapper their tokens are emitted based on the global map progress. So if so, it kind of incentivizes the drivers to maybe to take a different route home or take a different path because it'll earn them extra honey tokens. And that kind of um, incentive, every, everyone has common incentives in that way because they're all pushing towards global map progress. So it's pretty cool. Have you ever met someone who's a uh, street view hobbyist? What do you mean a hobbyist? <laughs> what does that mean? I, I, 
I met I met a guy before when we were having dinner. He's I think he's a I think he's an English guy, but we were in we were in Thailand, and he he, he kept pulling out his like apparently like on I don't know if it's on maps or on Street View or whatever, but you can kind of take a three D kind of oh yeah yeah three D image of of your surroundings and like actually like post it to Street View to see if like and and apparently there's like this whole community of people who do it like. Oh, cool! Just off the own back, <laughs> like, no yeah, incentive no, whatsoever. Those. Just that, because I think I think like it, you can it racks up how many you've done and really bit like, like street a game of thing. thing. Yeah, but like, you don't get anything for it. <laughs> so <laughs> it's just like street cred. Yeah, that's pretty funny. Yeah. No, yeah, I remember. Yeah, exploring new places and be like, oh, that's a cool view because you get that three sixty thing. So that's pretty cool. Um, you know, you know, the only thing I don't like about this. Um, even though I think it's really cool, is I think I have PTSD from maps.me from last cycle. <laughs> oh, I didn't I didn't mess with that. What's that? Uh so so maps maps.me is if you're if you ever travel I know you can do this on Google Google Maps, but I think maps.me is actually a little bit better for it. If you're ever traveling abroad and you know you're gonna get to a new place and you're not gonna have data or service on the other end, you can like you can download like a oh, local right. area of the map. Um, and it's, it's really, um, it's really good for, even if you need to get to like a, a, say a new coffee shop and, or whatever it's, it's on there. If you download it, like the most updated version of like, say, I don't know, Bangkok or where, wherever it's, it's just really, really good for that. But last cycle, I think FDX convinced them <laughs> to tokenize. Oh, so, um, and they launched with like. I don't know. I want to say like one percent circulating supply, oh and this was, this was and this it's was one much. of the tokens. This was one of the tokens on the Alameda balance sheet, where it was like, yeah, well, we've got like oh, three right. billion, three billion in these maps tokens. <laughs> they don't invest for another like three years, and it's yeah, obviously yeah. at one percent flow at the minute. So they were marking to FTV as opposed to kind of marking to, yeah. Oh, so. Gives me a little bit of PTSD, but um, yeah. I like I like what they're doing, and I like I think the what's it called the hive cam? Is that what it's called? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The dash cams. Um, I think they're really cool. Yeah, they're pretty cool, man. And um, yeah, they have this cool feature called bursts. So usually you get incentivized to map new areas, but say a company wants to plug in, they really need some data on this neighborhood. They'll do a burst, and they'll pay a little extra, and you'll get extra incentives to go and map a certain area so it kind of um, incentivizes companies to do that too and it's apparently they've gotten really good feedback because you can't really do that with google maps um, you can't really ask them to map an area more or less um, and it's a lot cheaper to do it um, if you're tokenizing it like this yeah so when i read this in your piece i don't know what what part of my brain holds on to this kind of stuff. But I remember re <laughs> reading an article from a couple of years back now where I was reading Wall Street, like specific funds on Wall Street were actually using satellite images to kind of assess activity in Walmart car parks across the US. Hilarious. Um, and they were saying, I, I, took, I took a quote out and put it in our notes. So the informational advantage yields 4 to 5% in the three days around the quarterly earnings announcement, which is a significant return over such a short window. Um, if you analyze it, the number is staggering. <laughs> so, <laughs> so this is like a very fringe case of where you could incentivize through, through this bursts mechanism to, I don't know, whatever, however the hell you want to use it. But if you needed like on the ground daily data, that is more, I don't know, live and, and trustworthy, I suppose, or like actual raw data from really weird objects, I suppose, like they were mapping <laughs> like activity in, in, in car parks or parking lots, or however you want to call it. Um, and as I said, they were making market, they were yielding 45% over three three days over quarterly earnings announcement. That's, that, that this, people will do crazy shit for money. And if there's an edge there to be gained, there could be a lot more of the shit that comes out of using stuff like this. Oh, for sure. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's pretty cool. And um, yeah, their honey token j just uh, did pretty well uh, recently. So I guess people are starting to notice. Yeah, 100%. So 
What is next? What is next? We have Teleport is up next. Oh, he was so. going to sweep it. <laughs> <laughs> Are you excited about this one? Yeah, I, I, yeah. I really like it. Um, only because it's it's like, uh, as I say, that it brings me back to when times were a lot simpler in 2017 when decentralized Uber was a, a thought. <laughs> <laughs> Uber on the blockchain, man. It's a, <laughs> if they're going to make it happen, I believe. Um, but yeah, basically Uber as a middleman can take like 30 to 40% of fees. And you hear all the time about how upset Uber drivers are with the company and squeezing them and they're not making a living. And yeah, I mean, that's basically what they're incentivized to do. They're trying to ins- <laughs> take as much money as possible from both sides until they can't anymore. Um, so yeah, I'm pretty excited about teleport and what they're trying to offer. Just like all these are trying to be really thin, trying to connect riders and drivers, but it gets really complex, right? Because it's not just riders and drivers. Um, they have a bunch of different actors that are trying to help this. So they have these things called balancers, which are trying to balance the whole supply and demand. They try to invite riders to drivers and try to balance that network. You have verifiers that inspect driver's licensing, driver's licenses and driver's cars. Um, this whole like legal and uh, and um, compliance on the side too. So it's kind of a complex operations they have to run. So, um, but it, it, they seem really well back. They got a $9 million raise back in uh, October 22. So um, they're deploying soon. I'm pretty excited to try it out if I can. Um, but yeah, they're trying to pass as much of the earnings onto the driver as possible. So I'm excited about it. Yeah, it's... um there's like some really strange vc fuckery that goes on with uber and like everyone knows that like seed series a maybe series b and like prior to them going public was every time i was getting a free five pound ride was basically going out of vc pocket and yep. <laughs> getting subsidized for a lot of those rides so and don't get me wrong that's a, just a customer acquisition channel and an easiest way to incentivize people to actually take it up yeah, um, easiest way to pay them. A lot of uh, stuff in the UK, UK where they put bans on like things called like zero hour contracts. So basically, oh yeah, you get the flexibility of working whenever you want, but when it comes to pension and when it comes to kind of getting looked after and stuff like that, that goes completely out the window. Nothing. Um, so that kind of, and uh, if you, we went to a festival in Barcelona four years ago now. And the full the full taxi service in the city went on strike over a festival period just to kind of Whoa. put their foot down against, against kind of like Uber. So across the world, it's it's not really thought of well. Like financially, I think it's just turning a profit marginally. I think I think they've got over two point five billion in debt that they're paying like seven percent interest on yearly. Yeah, I think <laughs> so, they just posted their first profit, um, but yeah. they're valued at like a hundred billion. So. It's pretty crazy. What, <laughs> what 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 is really interesting for me is the timing of 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 teleport because if I was a betting man and with the previous projects we've previously spoke about, I think Uber's going to try and stay afloat even at break even for as long as it takes for yeah. kind of self driving cars to be a thing. Um, and teleport probably has a little bit of a leg up with regards to fallen into this basket of deep in in all the kind of adjacent projects that are building in and around it um in this ecosystem so i think that's definitely on the horizon i don't know if that's a two years down the line i don't know if that's five years down the line i don't know i don't know how long that's coming if you ask me about musk it's coming next week but you know his timeline's <laughs> a little bit crazy but it's been I think a week that's away where, for about five years now yeah <laughs> i think that's where it's it's inevitably going um and it'd be really yeah. interesting to see decentralized networks with the likes of teleporter and this might be like a pipe dream that I'm, I'm kind of like envisioning in my mind but that'd be really really cool to see and as i say with even with the idea of this as a as a ride sharing competitor that was kind of a shot in the dark what six years ago seven years ago so yeah a lot can happen in particularly like an exponential age of tech of like that we're in now so um i really like the idea of it i, I really hope they do well i think they're gonna need a shitload more funding because nine yeah. million's not a lot um and you can only like i'd love to see what the token flow is at launch i can imagine it's extremely low because they're going to need that long runway of incentives but uh don't 
don't, don't bet against it. I think it's a it's a very 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 easy one liner to tell to say to people who are coming into the industry cold and you know how these things kind of go with that those kind of really easy pitches. Yeah, and I mean with most of these, I I mean we want them to succeed, right? It, it'd be better for humanity for a decentralized player to take the reins, and that's kind of at least that's why I got into crypto. It's just take the power away from people that have misaligned incentives against you and. Uh, yeah, I mean, it comes like even with ride sharing, it, it helps both sides of the rider and the driver if the middleman is not extracting maximum value. But yeah, so I'm excited about it. I mean, there's not a lot to know about like, the token itself for you guys, but um, we know it's going to be help or it's going to be used to help incentivize network participation in the early days. Just like all of these, um, you probably will get token incentives to try it out. I mean, what is it, Blackbird, that's even doing that for restaurants? You get tokens for trying to eat at restaurants. So they're trying everything, and we'll see what works. There's going to be a lot of um, crazy ideas out there, I'm sure, especially the coming year, hopefully, of bullishness. Um, but I'm excited about this one. Uh, I just I just checked. I, I know you put it in your report, but $121 billion valuation for... 120, wow, that was even more than I thought. Yeah, I put a hundred. I'll put a hundred over hundred twenty. We'll do an update. There we go. Wow, that's insane. Nine nine point two nine billion revenue, net income two hundred twenty one million, sort of two point three eight percent net profit margin, up one hundred sixteen percent on the year. So yeah, just coming into profitability. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's, that's wild. a wild. That's a wild PE ratio. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, there's these hyper growth companies, that's what you expect, but it's it's still crazy to see. It's, I mean, this whole thing with the hyper growth ideas, it just had so many crash and burns too. Um, mm-hmm. But when they hit, they do hit. So I guess that's why it exists. Too right. You know? But I suppose like if we're coming into like the first innings of Uber being profitable as well, is, could this not just be like another case of what we were saying Nvidia and Render if, if Uber continues to steal headlines and continues to rip it becomes more and more profitable over time and they start bringing in driverless cars and stuff like that it's just like yeah yeah you could definitely see this as like instead of like a competition like you could see it as a beta play even yeah. if uh, if Uber does even well no no point one percent of Uber would be 120 million market cap or some shit. So yeah, it's it's yeah those those type of mental math games get you in trouble, but it's a, <laughs> they keep me awake at night. <laughs> yeah, no, I I haven't put in this report like the market cap of tool. It's a it gets you into trouble sometimes. <laughs> and uh, um, yeah, no, but there's there's market there, and that's pretty much what we're trying to get across. There's a there's desire to have this type of network and. Hopefully, we can have a decentralized one soon. Have Have they said anything? I know they were on a podcast that should not be named. No, I'm only kidding. Um, <laughs> they were They were on They were on Lightspeed, and yeah, it was a good pod. I like that one. What did they mention anything about like go to market or like poaching drivers? <laughs> I have to them. imagine it's coming soon since they're doing their their marketing. Um, because they've been building for a while, right? Since end of 22, they got that raise. Um, but maybe they're just playing into the hype. I have to imagine they're trying to go full speed ahead because uh, of how the market's doing. Yeah, I wonder where they'll launch first. They're best in New York. Um, that would make sense. Yeah, usually they have like a pilot program in, in, different, in a specific city. Yeah. Oh well, I'd like to give it a go. We'll see. Yeah. I'd like um, to try it. Who have you got next here? Doing a couple coverage networks. Yeah, we're All trying right, to bucketize yeah. these as best we can. There's a lot of them, so we try to have some yeah, bite sized chunks. All right, I'm completely blind to this. So. Oh, yeah, for sure. So fill, fill me in as much as you can on this. I'll, I'll, I'll use this as a bit of a, a learning curve. Oh, for sure. So this one is pretty cool. It's called Onikoi. Um, it awakens the aerospace engineer in me. Um, it's basically 
so you have satellites up there, right? GPS satellites, positioning satellites, and they're really useful for a lot of different applications. But for some applications where you need some really fine detail on measurement, they're not the best. Um, and what they could be helped with is some like ground ground sensors to help um, help them along their way and get better accuracy. So these certain types of sensors are called RTK or real time kinematic sensors. They're little receivers, and they can give like millimeter level accuracy on uh, on monitoring positioning. So that's really important for something like uh, deformation monitoring. So if you're looking at is a bridge sagging, is a building tipping over over a long period of time, just like at the millimeter level level. Um, you can look at like different agriculture applications. Is your are your, is your soil or is your field tilting or moving in a way you don't want it to be? Like same with mining or like natural disaster warnings. So there's a lot of different applications where it's useful. But the problem is in today these um, these RTK um, receivers aren't really placed very helpfully. I mean they're mostly around like city centers and really really high impact areas, and it's hard to incentivize people to put them out where they're needed. So that's basically what Onikoi does. It's kind of similar models to what we've been talking about where they incentivize people to put these different receivers in places where they're useful. And on the other side, people that need this data will pay to use the network and those uh, funds will be distributed to the, the hardware owners. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. That's really cool. I really like stuff like this. <laughs> yeah, we're not, I'm not saying this is like some huge hundred billion dollar opportunity, but it's really interesting application of token incentives to work through this niche market. And um, there's so many electronic hobbyists out there just that like tinkering. So I could definitely see people plugging into the network and trying it out. They already have it's like two thousand participants using these and plugged into the networks. And they're only in uh, beta testing right now, so. Um, pretty cool. And yeah, I'm interested to see how they do. Uh, these receivers aren't really cheap. They're like a grand or two. So, okay. uh, yeah, I think that'll be the main point of friction they're going to have is, well, and the technical understanding of how to work these things because they're a little, um, a little tricky, but if there's money to be made, I'm sure people will figure it out. Oh yeah. hundred <laughs> percent. I, I just love this, like. A lot of um, a lot of Trojan horses here. Yes, exactly. Um, and it's just tapping into different industries that wouldn't necessarily typically come across what's happening in, in our industry. So, like, I I even spoke with a like a family friend. I hadn't spoken to them in like two years, and um, he'd been using these helium miners. I was like, really? what the hell did you know about helium miners? <laughs> He's like, yeah, I'm just like mining. Like, I was mining like this HNT. And then I was like, I've got this like mobile token or this IoT token now. And I was like, like shit, that's like, I wouldn't like, where are people getting this info? I no, <laughs> it doing a job. no, it's funny because you'll find these little pockets of community like on Reddit or Facebook and it's, completely detached from like the communities we usually run in and uh it's super interesting how these like bootstrapped communities come about yeah you can't tag in verse bar on reddit <laughs> no happen. you can't someday someday <laughs> um, i suppose that's a good segue into helium yeah sure i'll be a quick wrap up on ono tokens not live there's a couple details about it in the report but um It'll be interesting. Uh, it's, it's it's a fun one for me, just uh, as a nerd. But um, it, it probably no. won't get as much hype as the rest of these, to be fair. But I think it's cool. Yeah, not a bad distribution on tokens as well. It's one of the better ones. So the as but I suppose DAO investors found a team future upgrade. Mm -hmm. It's fine, right? It's a none of these are like stellar distributions, to be fair. Um, <laughs> I, the thing is, like, I would like the reward pool to be a big chunk because that's how you're distributing to people and that's how you're kickstarting the whole network. So to see something like 50% of the tokens go to insiders kind of makes me mm -hmm. cringe a little bit, but I understand they have to pay for the initial development and 
incentivize the team. I get it. I don't know. It is what it is. Um, Maybe there's a gap for uh, properly thought about talk and design in, in deep in space. Maybe we should spin up a consultancy. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Take 10%, 10% of everyone's supply. <laughs> yeah, we'll be the 10%. <laughs> We'll just make the problem if we, worse. <laughs> if we just get 10 projects and take 10% of the supply from each, it's like we did a whole project without doing it's, anything. That's it. We're, 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 we're part of the solution. DM's uh, open. Yeah, slide in there. Uh, yeah, we can talk about Helium. That's one of the other uh, OG D-Pin projects. Pretty cool. Yeah, like you said, they had their own network for a long time, but they recently moved over to Solana. Um, I, yeah, I think they were on Lightspeed too. Not to shield that podcast too much. They're, they do great stuff, to be fair. I love that podcast. Um, they do. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they had a good one on there that talked about um, talked about why they moved away from their own blockchain onto Solana. I guess there's just so many headaches with running your own blockchain, which makes a ton of sense. Yeah. If you um, if you if you create like one, you if you're running any centralized application, that is a pain in the ass. Yeah. Two hardware is just like no <laughs> no um and then three running your own network it's just like come on do you actually hate yourself <laughs> those people are masochist yeah it's fair it's play. wild fair play like that's you could have yeah. just launched your own fork and <laughs> yeah. yeah it's like the, the starting meme of this one it's like nah just your no fork <laughs> just raise 100 million and then get out of dodge yeah um no it's yeah props to them for sticking around for sure um i guess these new roll up roll apps as a service will kind of test that theory too if um monolithic yeah. is the way to go i'm excited to see that to be fair um but not to get off topic yeah helium <laughs> they have these um, two different types of hotspots. You have Internet of Things, which is like, uh, they call it like a low, it's a low range wide area network, a LoRaWAN network. So that's Internet of Things stuff. So you think like your smart fridge. Yeah, okay, that can be on that type of network. Um, and then you have like 5G mobile hotspots. So those are the main two products. Um, yeah, I think every pretty, everyone pretty much knows how Helium works. There's this huge web of, hotspots and then people that need broadband or sorry yeah bandwidth just go in and uh, use it so like you want to distribute food or you want to track locations or monitor the weather whatever you have this network that you don't necessarily need to pay an isp for and it's pretty cool um they recently just announced helium mobile which has got a lot of hype um yeah, I think mobile just got listed on Coinbase. It's, like, it's one of it's one of the token. coolest things that's, and I don't know why it's not getting. I know it's getting attention, but I think it's one of the coolest things I've I've seen in this space, hands down. Oh, for sure. Yeah, especially when like U.S. cellular plans can run you like a hundred bucks a month. These ones are. It? It's ridiculous. It's uh, it's wow. Yeah, it's uh, it doesn't I make any sense. I pay four pounds, so like get out of here. Six dollars for like forty gig. <laughs> That's insane. But I'm no. missing it, doing it so. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's tough for us us burgers over here, and uh, <laughs> but it's, uh, but yeah, they're they're offering um twenty bucks a month, and it'll use helium nodes when they're available, um, and their pilot programs over in Miami, so they're really putting a ton of uh incentivization to put nodes down in Miami. And then they'll use like T-Mobile when it's out of range. So you still get like T-Mobile as your backstop and all for $20 a month. Pretty cool. And um, it's generating a lot of interest. $20? That's a... Yeah, it's wow. not bad. Not bad at all. Um, you might be able to get that for like some of the budget ISPs out there. Or not ISPs, mm -hmm. but like coverage networks. But um, yeah, pretty cool to see. And they're getting a lot of hype, fair play. And uh, yeah, it just shows that there is demand there and there's like some real world applications to this type of thing. So pretty cool. Um, they're using a similar BME model to reward their node operators. 
So if you have a 5G node, you get these mobile tokens. And then if you have these uh, IoT nodes, you get IoT tokens. And then those can be burned to get HNT. So like their Helium network token, which is not a Helium network anymore, but forget about that. Um, yeah, and I think mobile, they, they're saying mobile can be used to be pay your you know, your uh, your bill, which is interesting. So I think that's why mobile just got a, a nice little pump, just a little pump. And uh, yeah, it's been pretty cool. Pretty cool to see. The um, What I also love about it is Helium Mobile and IoT inherently have this as I say, masochistic moat because nobody's gonna go. <laughs> no, nobody's going try, gonna try and replicate that shit unless you're like a batch, absolutely batch it crazy. Like there's so much forkable vaporware on the market that could make you a hell of a lot richer. I think it's it just comes with this inherent moat that, um, yes, you know, and that and that is some even that's something to be said. I think because yeah, no nobody's undertaking that task. No way. For sure. Yeah. It- if the hurdle is getting tens of thousands of people to put out these nodes, then yeah, you're not going to catch that if you have a front runner. Um, I'd love to yeah. know where this this traction. I and I know we it definitely comes across the desk an awful lot, and it comes across the feed an awful lot in in our circles. But I'd love to know where other what other avenues. I can imagine this is quite a big thing on Reddit, but I'd have to check Facebook groups. I don't know, but. Yeah, we get their BT, BT really BT interesting. Would be interesting to talk to for sure. Yeah, I'll I'll get Dan to shoot them a message, but yeah, it's it's really impressive. There's when stuff like cuts through, you know, like something like it breaks free out of the CT mind chamber. It's it's really <laughs> impressive. I'd love to know like the tricks of the trade that people get to actually get stuff further field because I I think it's really impressive. But yeah, no, it's yeah. interesting. Like we had. I thought we were going to get that with friend tech. We'll, we'll see if uh, that comes back. But uh, that was like the first time CT went in, out into the real world. Felt like. How, haven't they just sent 50% of the treasury to Coinbase? <laughs> ridiculous, man. They, they raise so much money and they have like the collective mind share and then they just wait six months to do any kind of airdrop or, and then didn't like they fire their lead dev and uh, sacked pancakes, bro. Uh, it's ridiculous, man. It's like, you oh, yeah. had the world in your hand. I guess they just want to milk it for. Well, markets are going up now, so other opportunities elsewhere. Oh, for sure, I guess. But they had the opportunity. I don't know. I don't know, but yeah, um, yeah, they're starting to get some more traction for sure. A helium that is, and um, the network doesn't make a lot of money just yet. Uh, obviously, well, maybe not. Obviously, I, I was kind of surprised. It was only like a, a grand or two a, a day. Uh, which mm-hmm. doesn't seem like a lot when market caps over a billion. Um, nearly, nearly worse than the Uber P&E. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, but they're trending in the right direction for adoption for sure. So um, I guess that's a good thing. Um, they still get some of the old coin bad um, mm-hmm. tendencies for sure, because you have a lot of bag holders from the last cycle. Um, so keep well, that in three, mind. Old coin bad, three coins good. <laughs> yeah, I guess. I mean, it's it's funny like the the in between redemption token is doing so well. It's like isn't that kind of backwards? I don't know. It's it's so strange can, to me. But can someone smarter than me just create an index of the three or the four or whatever <laughs> however many tokens they have? Yeah. No. Yeah. It's it's kind of silly. Um, yeah. What are you gonna do? Yeah, I mean, like H H N T. What it was uh, like fifty dollars back in twenty twenty one. Now it's trading at six. So I mean, you have that over your head for sure if you're like a buyer from the last bull market. So just keep that in mind for something like this. It's a really cool project, but I don't know. I guess it remains to be seen if we can get past get back to five bill market or yeah, five bill market cap. It's kind of a high water mark. Yeah, is that what it was? Yeah, five billion at one now. So still five X away from previous market cap all time high. Um price wise, what are we at? Six thirty. Yeah, like seven, eight X away price. So dilution hasn't even been that bad to be honest. Um, no. Not bad. Not bad at all. Sixty five percent circulating. 
but they've also yeah, just launched they have a like a having <laughs> yeah they have like a having schedule it's interesting um yeah no they have token emissions going out to the 2050s so a lot of these projects they, they have a long-term mindset mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. maybe they'll put them on mars when we're there you all go living. need a helium node on mars <laughs> all right what's next Oh, yeah, man. So these ones are pretty cool. So it's the whole idea of data gathering and handling because on Solana, I mean, you get a lot cheaper transactions and a lot faster. So there's an opportunity there for sure, I think, anyway. So Genesis Go is the first one we talk about. I think you get, didn't, you kind of turned me on to this a long time ago and I, I didn't look into it as much as I should have because I think it's up like crazy now. Um, so what made you excited about these ones? I know these guys, I know you, uh, dove into it a while back yeah i mean this was one of those ones where as i said relatively like on an older watch list kind of thing and then as soon as like solana started to move as a as like an Mm. ecosystem i was just like why hasn't this moved it didn't make any it didn't make any sense so it's just like a chip away at like a really small bag and forget about it really and then all i've seen was it like go ballistic and like do like two hundred percent of like a day or something like that? And I was just like, yeah, yeah someone yeah. finally figured it out. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but it was just one of those where at first glance, you know, on its on its on its own, without everything that's happening with in the kind of deep end category on Solana, it probably just would have stayed stale and stagnant and just did its did its own thing, but collectively i think they all like a rising tide lifts all ships i think and i think that's exactly what's happened here so they've probably seen early success of hnt like the t-mobile announcement as like as a, like the backup provider um because a lot of kind of outlets around the same time that came out and then people were like right well where's the beta and i think this ripped off the, off the back of the beta and as i said yeah it's, it's continued to do really really well but i think this I love the meme you've used. <laughs> I, couldn't, I couldn't agree more. Um, do you want to fill people in what the meme is? <laughs> oh, yeah. It's like the hard to swallow pills. And it's no one wants Filecoin when AWS already exists. And, <laughs> yeah, I just I want a more complicated, harder to use, slower AWS, please. And there yeah. you go. Um, but anyway, <laughs> yeah, Genesis Go has their product Shadow Drive. Um, and they have their own novel consensus mechanism called Dagger. Um, but their whole thing is they want to make file storage and compute or yeah, file storage and compute a lot faster and a lot easier to use. So as a point of reference, like if you want to use, move a, a, a one meg file on Filecoin, best case, it takes five minutes and worst case about four hours. And, uh, the same file would only take like three to seven seconds on shadow drive. And if you multiply that out hundreds or thousands of times, you get huge discrepancies. And hopefully with Shadow Drive, it's file storage and um, compute that people actually want to use. And I know a lot of projects are already thinking about building on there and keeping their file storage on there, especially Solana projects, right? So yeah, yeah. Uh, it makes a whole lot of sense. Ecosystem aligned. Uh, you've got exactly. Got yeah. So. Whereas projects on Ethereum might want, want to look at Filecoin as their file storage or file solutions, a lot of Solana projects are probably looking at Shadow Drive for the same thing. And uh, I mean, the whole purpose behind the Dagger consensus and running on Solana is to make it fast and cheap. And that's what you want in file storage. I mean, you don't want slow file speeds and transfer speeds, and you don't want expensive ones, heaven forbid. Um, you don't want to like pay a dollar every time you have to upload to Google Drive. Um, just not usable in that stage. Uh, but yeah, I think it's a pretty cool project. And they're really early, for sure. They're only in phase one of their test net. Um, but people are starting to, to take notice if their price action is anything to, to look at. Do you uh, know what Do you know what Filecoin's market cap was at the height of, the height of bull market mania? Oh, it's got to be a couple million or a couple billion. What's uh, what was it? Twelve point five billion. God, it's insane. Twelve point five. Yeah. So I mean, it's I mean, the left curve is like out in full for full force for uh for shadow for sure. 
Um, I even put Shadow, in here. What, yeah. 231 currently? Yeah, I mean, it's it's healthy. It's definitely a healthy valuation already, for sure. Mm -hmm. um, I think it's it might still be below the IDO price. Um, yeah, just, IDO is like, yeah, dollar seventy. It's it's just below that. But um, yeah, I mean, anyone can look at market cap of compared to Filecoin, and there you go. <laughs> People <laughs> will just aid based on that. Um, yeah. But their tokenomics are pretty interesting. Um, so from what I could find, the team wasn't given any direct allocations, but they could buy into the IDO and um, their NFT project received some tokens too. So they could buy into their NFTs. Um, and then no other insiders got allocations. It's pretty wild. So basically just community funded. Well, they bottomed at 8 million in Sheesh. January at uh, December, 2022. Wow. Yeah, so that's a big move. <laughs> it's a very, a big... very, very nice move. <laughs> yeah, when did they launch? Did they, um... oh, I guess 2022. So yeah, it's a rough time to launch, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah January 22. So. Yikes. Yeah, that's rough. But good props to them for keeping it. Fair building. player, yeah. Fair... Look at that, fair player. Yeah, <laughs> it's cool to see. Um... Yeah, so hopefully they do well. Uh, like Like we said, for all these... It, it benefits users if these projects do well for the most part. So, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to this one for sure. So this next one, I've got a funny confession to make. I still haven't claimed my PIF airdrop. <laughs> <laughs> I'm oh, no. shit scared of claiming anything. I'm not claiming oh, it. No. I've, I've been grinding and grinding and grinding on to get it to... Yeah, no, my buddy just got rid this I'm, morning, so it's not it's enough. rough, man. You gotta be careful. Yeah, the risk rewards are just not there for me. Bring back actual airdrops, not claim drops. Oh, for sure. Don't push be... push airdrops, please. Not pull. Yeah. <laughs> Ridiculous. Yeah, so no, like, I don't... did you did you do the dimensions? Yeah. Yeah, I got I got that one. We'll see how good it is. I think it'll be okay. I mean I completely fumbled my Tia bag, but it's uh it's fine. <laughs> We're not <laughs> There's going to be a lot of missed opportunities. Not, It's not helpful to dwell on them, I don't think. Yeah. I'll try, anyway. and, get, I'll try and get the Dimensions team back on. Oh, yeah, could, for sure. We could do, do a segment on roll-ups. Yeah, no, I'm excited. I'm curious to see who their biggest customers are, right? Like, um, they're trying to use, what, TIA for DA, and then they're going to be the settlement layer. Is that how that works? Hmm. Yeah, pretty cool. Um, but yeah, back to Pith. Yeah, they the reason why we just talked about them is they had a pretty cool airdrop. Uh, people were pretty hyped about it. You get the whole meme of a chain link for Solana, which isn't really very accurate. Um, no. Pith, <laughs> but Pith is like the largest. They call themselves the largest first party oracle provider, where they don't provide, they don't rely on third parties to go and gather data for them. They get direct um, tethers to basically price feeds for the most part is what they're focused on. So it's low latency price feeds. So you need those for financial apps for sure. And um, yeah, they use wormhole for their cross chain messaging. So you can technically get um, from Solana to other chain uh, communications or from chain to off chain, on chain, off chain. And yeah, they've been doing pretty well. Um, how they basically work is there's three categories of users. You have publishers who publish the data to the network and for their trouble, they get a share of the data fees that customers pay. Um, and they're rewarded in proportion to like the data they provide. And then the consumers ingest those price feeds and they use it in their apps. And sometimes they'll pay some data fees um, if they want priority access to those data feeds. And then delegators can stake tokens with publishers um, in order to like to back them and order a portion of their uh, earn a portion of their fees, um, but they could also get slashed if that oracle is it misbehaves. It's a pretty cool model. Um, it's really early days for Pith. To be fair, um, they're getting some use. They, they get some fees, but it's kind of pretty small compared to their valuation. I think uh, people I think just are assigning Link's valuation to Pith, and that's why. 
Um, price has been pretty good. I guess their FTV is, uh, when I wrote this, was $4 billion. I guess it's 2 and a half now. Wow. Um, so the future a little bit there. But no, I, I think it's a cool project, and it's um, definitely helpful for data feeds. But you have to remember that Chainlink isn't only data feeds. They also do like data streams, so not necessarily just pricing, but you can look at different um every anything any data point that you're thinking of um well and that's, why we see, have, that's when we've seen the gambling gamble fire explosion because they they um started getting betting odds yeah like live betting odd feeds as well so that's that's why we've seen every man and the dog roll out a, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a gambling project because those chain link price feeds came on for, yeah for, and for betting order books yeah, so the order book feeds, they have the verifiably random functions. So you can have provable random functions on chain. They have proof of reserves, which is nice because you can check like, okay, this LST that I bought, is it fully backed by ETH on the other side? You can do that. They have CCIP. So they have that kind of quasi layer zero competitor. It's just like this cross-chain messaging protocol. Have you ever used it for USDC, by the way? I've heard it's quite expensive. No, it wasn't bad. It was no. like a dollar last I tried it. All right. Sure. Um, yeah. Yeah. But it feels like anyway. it feels like they launch these products and there's such a drawn out adoption curve for them. Um, particularly like the products that anyone can get their hands on. And I and I think Chainlink of X like because they were so far ahead. They've completely cornered the market, and everyone's so reliant on them. And like the amount of governance proposals you read, where Chainlink will be taking a portion of token yeah. supply or re- even revenue, like GMX V two, the the bespoke low latency oracles, they pay. I can't remember the number, so I won't state. It, but they like all revenue that goes through GMX V two is paid to Chainlink for providing these low latency. Oracles, which are obviously needed for for V two to actually exist on GMX, but it's like they're the Oracle cartel. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, so they're trying to build out a full product, product but... right? It's not yeah. just the Oracle itself. It's it's trying to be a one stop shop for whatever else you would want in an Oracle product, like tangentially. So yeah, yeah, those low latency fees make sense. I mean, that's why Pith exists is because they want to provide those low latency price feeds. Um, especially on like, uh, what was it? NASDAQ, the speed of light for, uh, Solana. Um, so that makes complete sense. It's yeah. Piths itself, they're only like 15% diluted so far. So early days, um, just keep that in mind for long-term bag holders. Um, but yeah, it's a cool project. Um, uh, but I, I don't think the direct comparison to Chainlink's FTV is fair at no. this point anyway. But a lot of people won't do any further service level, level digging than going to categories on CoinGecko and seeing they're in the same basket and then <laughs> yeah, going to mark and then, the cap off. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, the link link marines will just be terrible. Oh yeah, and, and that that's another that's another aspect. You got absolutely yeah. There's no destroyed. pith marines yet. No, no, no. And I think it'd be you'd be kind of extradited from. <laughs> any community if you if that, if that that's a difficult community to grow like fair play if you can get that off the ground it's funny man it's it's funny how these communities form um i wonder how much of it was orchestrated you know like thought about at the time i don't know do uh-huh. not know okay getting the home stretch how you feeling good yeah <laughs> i'm good yeah i okay, thought so- i have like Four, four podcasts today, but I've only did two, so I'm good. <laughs> yeah, you're a madman. I don't know how you do it. Uh, at least you let me talk a lot for this one, so you're saving yourself a little bit. <laughs> yeah, okay. Next one up. All right, Sinesis one. This one's pretty cool. Um, I've been saying that for all of them, but they're all pretty cool. Or else I wouldn't have included <laughs> them. Um, so if you think about like AI training, you have to have this huge data set in order to train that data. Because if you don't have good training data, you're not going to get a good AI and you're not going to get a good model. Um, But how do you get that data? And there's not really a decentralized method to get that data. Um, 
think they estimated that the data set market, like the data training set market is going to be about $10 billion over the coming years. And there's just not a way to do that in a centralized way. So that's where Sinesis One comes in. They're trying to make it like a train to earn model where they have these customers, these AI training set gatherers that say, okay, we want this type of new data. Um, and then different roles within the Cinesis One ecosystem will go in provide or make these sort of games for people to play in order to fill out this data set and reward people based on that. So you're kind of getting those pay-per-click um, workforce people that would do that sort of thing anyway and kind of gamifying it and paying it out in a in a, a kind of a way that's incentivized like a lot of these other projects. Um, so I think it's pretty cool. I think um, they already have like a decent amount of people working like and building these uh, and playing these games pretty much. Even though it's early days, they already got like 60,000 Twitter followers and um, they've already had 175,000 data points passed through. Wow. Um, yes, yeah, so it's pretty impressive. Uh, they also have this NFT collection on top of it where since they're mostly building large, large language models that have to do with keywords, you can buy a keyword NFT. And anytime that keyword is used in the model, you get some kind of uh, payout based on that. You get paid royalties. This is, so. really, this is really interesting because it's it's kind of leveraging the addiction to <laughs> incentives and airdrops and crypto incentivization for something that's really quite impressive. Yeah. That's, no, it's, that's it's really cool. Program. It's a it's it's trying to build out data sets for um yeah, I mean just try to align the incentives, right? Because there's people out there that will play games and they don't really care if it's not earning a ton of money. They're just kind of enjoying the process of it. And at the same time they're building out that data set for these companies that need it. And um well yeah. Uh, going back to our friends at Google <laughs> <laughs> They've been farming us for years now on capture and recapture uh -huh. for training things like self-driving cars and whatever have you. So all the time that you're solving captures and stuff like that, they've been using those like the way more model cars. Yep. So so it's like, <laughs> what were we getting out of that? Just an, an extra step that's extremely annoying. I know it's like a security step, but this this is really this is really interesting. I, I can imagine there's much more of this to come because as you say um like i was speaking to someone the other day about so obviously grok on twitter um and there's like yeah. a ridiculous amount of tweets sent per day and like per second is like absolutely mind-blowing like tens of thousands of tweets sent per, se sent per second um so if grok is training from twitter one god help us all <laughs> <laughs> But two, it makes a lot more sense why um, Elon has had like such a strong focus on removing any bot activity, because like you can imagine that bad data and that bad clusters of, of of information that's going through the large language model to actually train Grok is just like completely useful, uh, useless. Yeah. Um, so I was like putting kind of two and two together. I was like, he's literally training potentially one of the world's most powerful AI large language models on a data set that is 100% unrivaled. You're getting pure unadulterated thoughts from humans at tens yeah. of thousands of them every single second and carving out, you can probably train it on the verified accounts because you'd like to think that they weren't bots. So I was just thinking about like what the long game was around that. But um, yeah, this is kind of a, a much more, well, infinitely smaller scale, but I think it's uh, leveraging complete degenerates to actually get the data set <laughs> that's actually needed <laughs> yeah no it's a cool idea for sure it, um yeah i wanted to talk a little bit about like the team because there was a lot of uh uh worry i guess because there's one of the founders who's also one of the founders of mind ai the company they work with to mm -hmm. like get the data for so also founder there he also founded this other DeFi protocol called Formation Fi, which um, is working on bringing like risk parity to DeFi, but they've been really slow development. So they've launched an IDO 
uh, back in 2021, launched the form token and some hacks and thefts. Uh, the token got delisted, team got shooken up, and the launch, they just launched their initial test version now. Um, and the token is one of the worst charts I've ever seen. Um, <laughs> so there's some worry there for sure. There's a, um, there's some overlap for the leadership, but besides that, the team at, at Cinesis is all different besides that guy is from what I've heard and when I've talked to the team. So I would keep an eye on development, but Cinesis has been delivering, uh, for sure. They already have a working product that you can go and try. You have to have one of their NFTs to go and start earning, um, and playing the games, but I, I watched the demo. It looked pretty cool. It looked pretty simple. You're basically, it gives you a prompt and it asks you to reword it in a way that a human would reword it, but an AI might find it difficult to understand. It's asking the same thing. Yeah. Um, so that's like one of the first type of games they have. But yeah, they're still building um, pretty low market cap right now, but just keep an eye out for, or like I would keep an eye out for roadmap delivery personally, but. I think it's pretty cool. They also have pretty big earmarked investor um, side of things too. So heads up on that. Yeah, there's, there'll be so many quirks of like AI that are just so difficult to weed out until it's had like such a large amount of data pushed through it. Like like hands and fingers on mid journey and still diffusion are still hilarious and like yeah. it's, <laughs> I still can't get that right and. Um, I listened. I was listening to. Uh, I can't remember what it was, if, but apparently there's like a, a new Kanye song where they can't really figure out if it's a deep fake or not. And then someone's oh, saying, is. someone was saying like he's quite, um, I suppose, famous kind of like intake on his breath. He's like that. That would be too difficult to actually run through. And like when, when he's know, like, in the most of it's fake. So, but I was like. Phew, don't know man. like uh, the amount of music that he's got out there and the amount of interviews and the amount of like mad tyrannical rants that he's gone on i was like there's a lot of data there to be uh to be hard and to be processed and if yeah, it's one honestly, specific person you know i yeah, don't know honestly, kind of worried about that for the upcoming election in the u.s it's like it's gonna be a lot of misinformation out there i think the check out what this guy said and it's just this off the wall or even like a believable thing that someone could say that's just misinformation. It's uh, worrying for sure. The detection for it the, has to get a little better. Yeah, I can't remember who the. Uh, there's definitely a company building on, on, like trustless verification rails. I don't know what chain yeah. or whatever they, they're using, but they're definitely, definitely working on that for like, like this has been signed as authentic and this hasn't been. Yeah, signed that's as, you know, like, I can't. I can't remember who that. I'll try and dig it out for next time we're on, but um, I, I know that's kind of it's it's kind of one of the things that you'd expect to see on like Reddit, where it'd be like, "Oh yeah, blockchain is going to be used for this." And it's just like, yeah, get a grip. It's a, it's a Ponzi <laughs> casino. <laughs> no, it's but, just all dog um, coins, man. Yeah, yeah. All the but way like, down. In, in all seriousness, like, there's no better system for it. Yeah, like cryptography, man. I mean, it's like the. Yeah. That's what it all gets started with, digital signatures and verifiable ownership. So, yeah, hopefully finds another use case there. Yeah. Yeah, so, that, that form, I've just looked at that form token chart, the previous project. There's very strong support at zero, I think. <laughs> <laughs> strong support. That's awesome. Yeah, I mean, there's just, for better or for worse, there's a dime a dozen of projects like this that launched uh, yeah. the hype of the last cycle and it's just the charts look like this it's oh, it I'm, I'm, yeah down 99.8 percent from the peak that's rough man but hopefully the team learned from the stakes and uh yeah pivot's not always a bad thing um we'll see we'll see how Cinesis does just everybody has to know the risks and if you want to know the risks look at the form chart yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so anyway. this next one's really this next one's really really interesting. I'm trying to find a time where us and the team can actually get on. I think we're passing ships when it comes to times, but we'll figure something out because um this one's getting farmed heavily. <laughs> I know a lot yeah. of people 
<laughs> I, I tried to I save a fun one for last. I think grass <laughs> is a really cool idea. Um, so like we just said with Synesis, you need these huge training sets for these AI models. And one way, and usually the most popular way to get all this data is to scrape the internet. But the internet that I see isn't necessarily the same internet that you see because there's cookies and um, websites and browsers might show you something different based on what they think you want to see. So by going through people's IPs, you can get a different viewpoint of the internet pretty much. And uh, that's what Grass is trying to do. So you can install this browser extension and then vetted companies, um, so they're, they're not going to be sketchy, can use your idle bandwidth from your node and they end up paying you to borrow your internet access and gather data. Um, and yeah, they're, they're leaning into the AI ecosystem because they should, because it's gives them a 10 X multiple in their price pretty much. I think it's hilarious that it's obviously very, it's coming out of, I think initially from the new order camp, right? If I'm not mistaken, wind, the, the clientele that this will be getting trained on, like I'd hate to see their internet history or what they're browsing (laughs) on. Because it's all, it's all of us and people like us. Poor, poor poor AI companies. (laughs) But that is what it is. (laughs) Yeah, so, but yeah, obviously it's getting a lot of traction on on Twitter for um, pretty easy way to farm it. You don't have to put any any capital or anything like that. You don't have to bridge. You just install this browser extension and you're incentivized to refer people. Um, So that's what they're doing. Yeah, it's pretty cool. I mean, the token isn't out yet. There's not really a whole lot known about it. Um, but you just, you know, it's going to be used for farming incentives to get started. Um, and yeah, it's it's just kind of another way for people to earn passive income for the most part. And this one's even easier because you don't have to get like this whole dedicated device to uh, to use it. You just spin it up on your, your browser. And by the looks of it, Q1 2024 for... Apple, Android, and already on Cyberphone. Yep. Yeah, so you can have another node on your phone. So I'm going to get more diluted, which is great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I, I think it's, uh, I say, getting farmed heavily, but I think we're going to see a lot more of this um, just based on the past two that we've we've just, just covered. I think there's going to be, it's ripe for it, isn't it? Like any incentivized structure with, any incentivized token structure to get the masses to play along and generate these data sets. I think it's inevitable, really. Yeah, for sure. And um, it's cool to see, for sure, because uh, if you get paid to generate it, why not? There are some worries, of course, that people are using your um, your bandwidth to do some shady stuff, but thankfully they, they vet all the the company's using it, but that is, yeah, one warning if you're going to be using this, that, yeah, your internet use is going to be used by somebody else. It is end-to-end encrypted, so you got that going for you. So don't say any shady shit about the government, or you might <laughs> I might I think, show your nudes to Facebook. <laughs> yeah, something like that. I think people are more worried about the companies doing some yeah. shady stuff on your internet, but yeah, that too. But a couple Nothing a couple of tokens won't fix. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you can spend your tokens for prison. <laughs> yeah. Is that it? Jeez. Yeah, man. That was all 11. So that's um, the Solana deep in narrative. But yeah, we're pretty excited about Or at least I am. Because it, it connects. Oh, yeah. 100%. It connects people that wouldn't normally be in this space to the space. Because like you said, it's like any one of these could be a Trojan horse. Right? That gets your friends or your your family interested in this type of thing. So it's something to be excited about. And uh, you kind of see like the VC incentive structure work from a decentralized way where you use these tokens instead of these VC dollars. And then it goes to work making a super thin middleman. And uh, I think that's what you want in these services. Yeah, you can drastically reduce the amount needed to actually raise and get a product over the line through like if you play it properly through through your, your incentive structure and, and how you structure your tokenomics i think it's that's kind of one of the on 
underappreciated aspects i think of, of the whole tokenization movement so um i still I think there's a couple that i still think probably will need series a relatively soon to actually get stuff over the line anything physical is a pain in the ass and you have to deal with like logistics and supply chain and stuff like that but as a basket i think even some of the kind of murmurs that we're seeing with with ai and i don't even know how to value ai i don't think anyone does exactly. at this point in time and and crypto times ai equals supercharged on steroids yeah. <laughs> so i have absolutely no idea how this whole thing plays out but um it's gonna it'll be something we'll be covering a lot more in detail and i think um you know like multi 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 coin capital guys like kyle and uh their team that big picks a ai solana expansion i know they've invested in say and i think deepens their other mega bet they've been like the most contrarian and correct investors of the last five five years maybe four years five years so um yeah, yeah. It could, it could, it, it. people could people could mid curve this and be like eh. <laughs> but i don't know i'm 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 gonna pay some serious attention to it and i hope everyone's taken something from this i know you might have spent you spent a lot of time listening to me in 563 so thank you very much <laughs> um as i say, this time stamp's there for a reason um anything you want to wrap up with or no man um yeah folks uh check out the article um dives a little bit more into all this and gives you some resources to do your own research but yeah i'm excited about it i think this is going to be one of the big ideas and one of the big narratives going forward so excited for deep in yeah too right so by the time you listen to this and read the article you are an industry leading expert in the field any commissions can be sent direct to <laughs> my wallet there you and... go. yeah Happy farming all these projects, ladies and gents. But yeah, thanks a lot. Uh, we'll be back soon with, I don't know what, I think we were going to do another unreleased projects. Is that what we yeah. said? Yeah, let's do it. It'll do Q1 unreleased projects of 2024. We'll be back with some projects that you've never heard of, how you get your hands on them, what they're all about. And yeah, that's about it. Thanks a lot. Speak to you soon. <laughs>